Hello, guys, and welcome to this week's uh, article on ProRPA.com. Today, uh, we'll continue our discussion on uh, error handling, right? And we'll go uh, with a very uh, brief example of how we can uh, handle exceptions or any errors um, in an efficient way, right? So um, we're going to discuss about try block, catch block, and the finally block, which uh, uh, which are used to handle the errors. And uh, these are like precisely the same terminologies that we use in uh, programming world as well. So if you know Java, C++, .NET or anything like that of, of, of that similar nature, then these programming languages also have these try block, catch block, and the finally block too. And uh, um, we can put like uh, programming statements in them so that uh, we can handle any unexpected occurrences uh, in a in an efficient and legible manner right so um i'm gonna take a very simple example let me open a website okay um seems stuck for now So I'm logging into this website called login.salesforce.com. I'm trying to log into my Salesforce account, right? And that's something which, uh, like a cloud implementation, which is very useful and many, many small or um, in large forms as well. It's it's a very famous, you know, application tool. So um, say we have this and uh, we want to log into our Salesforce account using the correct login ID and the password, right? So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work out. We, I mean, we have discussed these sort of steps uh, like a lot of times before. So um, it shouldn't come as a surprise. I'm gonna show the activities for it. Let me get a sequence first. Okay, and in here, um, I'm going to use a try catch block. I'll explain what try catch is going to do. Um, the try is going to, you know, monitor any of those activities within this block, which where there's a probability uh, or a high probability, I would say, or as per se, I mean, like even a single, like minimal probability of any error that may occur. So uh, any error in these um, in in the activities which are there within the try block are handled correspondingly by the catches block, right? I've discussed this in uh, the theoretical part. I've discussed in this week's blog post, so please do check that out. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, right, just a second. My system is a bit slow today. I'm not sure why. So type into and uh, indicate on screen. This is the username that I where I want to put my username, right? And that's the data I want to put. Admin. Just you know, quick example, and then. Uh, I also want to put password. So here is the password field that I selected. Right? So I have the user ID and the password. And there is some sort of uh, error thing which is going on. So there's no uh, remote should have validation errors. Let's see what it is. Let me delete this. This is something old. It's probably I don't need here. So uh, I have the user ID and the password I've entered, right? And uh, once I do that, I also want to make sure that, uh, that you know, uh, I should get some sort of notification or some sort of like a checkpoint for me. And this is like, again, personally, as a developer, I'm saying, I want to see that uh, the try block was the one who, which actually got executed. So,
right? And um, I've entered the user ID and the password and everything. So, um, right, uh, I also wanna like run it right away, but um, um, I cannot because uh, it needs to have a subsequent catches expression. At least one exception needs to be handled. So, um, this is how we put the um, like the statements or the activities within the try block. Let me tell you what exactly do we do in the catch block. In catch block, we first of all define the type of exception that may occur and we want to correspondingly handle it. So say if you are trying to divide a number by zero, right? Then that's like a type of exception where, where it's an invalid operation, right? You cannot divide a number by zero. So um, you would you may want to put that particular type of exception and uh, it should be handled by, I mean, depends on the recovery mechanism that you want. It could be like um, you want to, instead of zero as the denominator of that numerical expression, you may want to put it as one or, or, or print a message saying, you know, uh, divide by zero is not permissible. Please change the variable right away or something like that. That, that depends. You may want to re-execute the program or, you know. So um, like, there could be in input output exception. There could be a null reference exception. That means you're trying to uh, uh, like access a null expression, right? It, it is not referring to anything, but you're trying to refer. Uh, it, you're trying to access some data item to a location which is not available, or there could be some argument exception. Again, there are like different types of exception, and I've also provided a link. These are like similar to what we have in .NET, right? So um, please do check out that link, which is again available on the blog post, and um, you can learn about the different types of exceptions available to us. But uh, a very common one, which pretty much handles all the exceptions, it is like the default exception that can be handled, is the system exception. So um, I've put in the exception type as system exception, and uh, the activity that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, let, let's say if I'm not able to somehow enter the user ID and the password. Right. Then what I'm going to do is, let me show you. I'm going to open the browser again. Okay. Right. And uh, in the browser, I want to get to login.salesforce.com. And uh, I want to put in the user ID and the password like this, same as before. And we'll see if that works or not, right? That's the test, but it should. So um, we have the try catch block. I used exactly the same details, but the only difference is that now it's opening a new instance of the browser, and then it's entering the user ID and the password, right? And it works. And uh, um, let me put another message box saying that you know catches block has been executed successfully or something like that. So. And, uh, and finally, so finally is something that is sort of independent of the try catch. So whether an error occurred or not during uh, the execution of certain activities, it doesn't matter. Any statements, any activities, any programming content that we may have in the finally block always gets executed, right? So uh, usually that stuff which is mandatory in an exec in, in, in execution of a program is what we put in the finally block, but it's an optional uh, block. So you may not have any activities in here. That's fine as well. So if you want to see that catches, uh, like whether it's try block, whether it's catches block, whether it's finally all of them in which sequence they got executed, I have put in these message boxes so that when we'll be running this program, uh, we'll get to know where exactly do we stand in terms of the execution uh, direction or the placement of which activity actually got executed, right? So five block got executed and um, there is no error because now for the try uh, activity sequence that we have, we have a particular uh, or a corresponding catches sequence too, right? So back to login to Salesforce and uh, I'm gonna save this as well. Let's sit here. And uh, on the side, let me also, because we, we may want to see, you know, uh, correspondingly what all differences uh, or what all, you know, how the uh, 
process is executing with the and try block executed successfully. You see, because the instance was open, and finally block also got executed after that, right? So you understand, right? That uh, it was able to find these elements, so it was all good. Now let me close this. Now it won't be able to find the login ID and the password fields where it needs to enter that data, the admin and the password. So what are we gonna do? It's gonna handle that exception much efficiently. You can imagine, right? So you ran the statement. It's gonna look for that for almost 20, 30 seconds because you could have set the timeout, uh, the MS parameter uh, in the properties window, but we didn't. So by default, it's like 20, 30, 30 seconds. So, um, uh, once it concludes that it cannot find the elements, it's going to open the browser, uh, get into that login.salesforce.com, and then enter the user ID and the password. So it did open the page. Uh, I mean, it's trying to get to the login.salesforce.com. Another good practice is that, you know, you may want to maximize the screen by, and I've discussed this before, by, you know, either clicking the maximize button or by um, sending the hotkeys, windows, and the up arrow. So um, it already logged into the Salesforce, but uh, it's looking for the user ID and the password, it seems like, the fields. And it did. And catches block executed successfully this time, hitting OK, and the final block is also executing. So, I mean, you're able to see, you know, um, the particular sequence in which the activities are being executed. If an error occurs, the browser or whatever your recovery mechanism is will be executed. So, um, usually what we do is uh, when we are creating a program, we may want to come with as many uh, unexpected or like say expected errors that may occur, like, you know, um, there's a possibility that uh, uh, your program error out because your internet bandwidth is way too slow, right? Even in 30 seconds, you're not able to, let's say, uh, pull up the web page. Then um, what you may want to do is either um, your recovery mechanism is, could be to, um, to refresh the page. You know, that's what you do manually as well, right? Once you're not able to log into a page, you will probably start cramping your keyboard and pressing F5 key like a few times or uh, clicking on the refresh button in your browser or something like that, right? And uh, um, another recovery mechanism as we showed here is that you're you're not able to find some something, then you, you may wanna restart your browser and provide another instance and uh, uh, start logging in. If you're not able to log in or if it somehow, like it happens many a times with me, especially with the Internet Explorer, not that I'm, um, trying to demote it to some extent, but uh, let's say Internet Explorer is not working, I would rather open another Internet Explorer instance and I would open it, uh, open my website, right? Uh, any Oracle product, which many a times do support only Internet Explorer and not Chrome. So um, these are one, um, uh, even for the desktop applications, if you're not able to, uh, uh, like you double clicked on something, I somehow, let's say, double clicked on this sticky uh, folder, but it didn't open. Right, so I'm not able to continue with any other operations that I have, subsequent operations that I have within my bot. So you may wanna have your recovery mechanism as a pressing or double clicking the folder again or directly going to the directory location itself and start continuing with the other operations, right? So um, try to come up with as many use cases as you can and then uh, add them to your catches block so that you're able to make your bot as robust as possible. That's the key to having um, a great RPA bot working for you. And uh, the more occurrences, the more unexpected these ad hoc issues that you can come up with, the better your program is gonna be. That's always gonna be the case, no matter if it's RPA bot, even in your actual uh, programming languages when you're um, learning to develop software applications, then you need to come up with anything that uh, that may occur when a user is working on that application and then have some sort of recovery mechanism for them, right? So um, that pretty much is uh, the error ex or the exception handling within the UI path. Uh, for a thorough learning, please do check out the CRISPR learning book series as well as the video tutorials available on Amazon. And uh, for the video tutorials, you can check out the udemy.com or skillshare.com. 
and uh, please do subscribe to the blog for the, these weekly posts and subscribe to the YouTube channel, blog articles and uh, and let me know your feedback for the same. These things do keep us motivated to come up with more content for you guys and uh, make the learning experience uh, more fun and interactive. All right. Um, thank you very much, guys. Hope you liked it and happy automating. Goodbye.